first technique to modify the DNA bases uh, in vitro it is caset mutagenesis. Now mutagenesis it is very basic tool in the field of molecular biology. Just like I have told you that we have to do the functions of the genes ko study kar sakte hain. We can compare that uh, this particular gene it produced this particular protein and after inducing the mutations in that particular gene we can compare the function uh, of a protein uh, in relation to wild type phenotype or the bacterial strain spores. Uh, so uh, it is very important to know the functions of different gene. And classically these mutations as I mentioned earlier they were induced by using different type of uh, uh, mutagenic agents are physical factors and commonly they may be called as the uh, mutagens and these uh, those mutagens although uh, they were used uh, but uh, classically they were very important because uh, it uh, led to the development of the field of molecular biology although the significance of those mutagens were very important but uh, they were having certain disadvantages. Uh, for example, at, uh, at the beginning uh, of the process of mutagenesis, under, under the laboratory conditions, uh, what was the problem that uh, uh, whole organisms like the bacterial cells or some higher organism like the fruit flies, in order to induce the mutations, they have to be exposed uh, to the radiation. So whole cell or whole organisms uh, has to be exposed to the uh, mutagenic agent. So in this way, uh, the other non-target genes, they may also be mutated. And we also have uh, no idea that uh, whether the target gene it is mutated and if it is mutated, at which frequency. So uh, different st screening strategies were required for this purpose. So this is one of the disadvantage. Another disadvantage was that uh, if after mutation the desired phenotype, if, if it is available, still we don't have any idea that whether the mutation it is within the desired gene or target DNA segment. And third disadvantage was that uh, before the availability of modern DNA sequencing techniques, uh, we don't uh, had, I have an idea that uh, whether the mutation it is within a gene and if it is within a gene uh, which portion it is mutated and whether this mutation it is due to base substitution uh, addition of DNA or uh, deletions so we don't uh, have informations uh, by using classical mutagens then with the passage of time the availability of modern molecular techniques or sequencing techniques now we can induce mutations under the laboratory and in, in such a way that a specific base or segment of the DNA can be targeted or altered. No, because we can target a particular base within the DNA. So because of this reason, this laboratory process, it is called as site-directed mutagenesis. And one of the type is caset mutagenesis. Now, what we can do in caset mutagenesis process here, the, the target gene, if it is present within a recombinant vector, it can be uh, mutated. For example, for this purpose, if target gene it is present within a recombinant vector, we must have uh, two target sites that uh, may be flanking our target uh, DNA so that by using restriction enzyme the DNA fragment of wild type it can be removed and then it can be replaced with synthetic DNA fragment so in this way we may have uh, uh, DNA alteration efficiency 
maybe around 100%. But the basic prerequisite is that uh, target sites for restriction endonuclease, uh, it must be available so that we can uh, remove the wild type fragment of the DNA and replace it with our own synthetic fragment with our own choice of sequence. How it can be carried out? Here it is the basic outline that we first have a recombinant DNA plasmid that contain our target gene here that is shown here maybe as a pink and then by treating with restriction endonucleases it can be removed from the vector and can be replaced with synthetic DNA fragment that contain our sequence of choice and then it can be uh, ligated with the help of DNA ligase. So in this way the trans you can say that the mutation efficiency it may be 100%.